The Earth and Moon formed at pretty much the same time, about four and a half thousand million years ago. Except for a few trace gases on its surface, the Moon has no measurable atmosphere. It has no weather, plate tectonics, or liquid water to resurface its features, and because of this, it holds its scars for a very, very long time. Even through a small backyard telescope, you can see vast plains, rugged mountains, and impact craters of every size and shape. In fact, the entire thing is covered by them. Impact craters form when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object, and the energy released can be the most powerful of anything on a planetary scale. It can break worlds apart. The surface of every solid body in the solar system, from Mercury to the moons of Neptune, are all literally covered in craters. The Earth is dynamic, ever-changing. It has water covering 80% of its surface and is the only body in the solar system with active plate tectonics. This and erosion of the land destroys the signs of impact craters. There are only around 220 confirmed meteorite craters over the surface of the Earth, dating back to only half of its age. And of these, Australia has about 35 of them. Australia is nearly 4,000 kilometers across and is bigger than the moon. It has vast areas of near inaccessible terrain that you need either a fully equipped four-wheel drive to traverse or something with two wheels. So um, what we'll do is we'll just kind of mount that onto the roof perhaps yeah. so you can just start a recording just as an extra kind of camera pointing somewhere. Here we have the Hello Kitty Kawasaki Zephyr and the TDM and the Nissan Navara. Once you get beyond the Great Dividing Range from Brisbane, you hit a huge expanse of flatness. The vast distances between the towns mean you actually get to stop in most of them for a break, rather than just driving straight through them. Tukanuka and its sister crater Tawandili are believed to have occurred simultaneously as a larger object broke apart on its descent towards the Earth. This event created one crater 55 kilometers across and another 30 kilometers in diameter. 128 million years ago, the eastern coast of Australia was covered by a shallow sea that extended from the Gulf of Carpentaria in the north through the belly of the continent and out of the Great Australian Bight. Over the course of millions of years, deposits of oil and natural gas accumulate, and if an impact event occurs, the energy in the shock waves can sieve through the shocked rocks to create deposits large enough to be mined. Tukanuka and Talandili both have oil wells associated with them. New South Wales is home to most of Australia's research-grade telescopes. A quick trip down the coast to Sydney sets me up to visit most of these on the way back up. I'm in New South Wales in the Lawn Basin. Um, this is a highly speculative impact site. The only reason that people actually think it could be one is because it's a roughly circular depression. Um, it's about 35 by 30 kilometers long. You can kind of see on the outer ridges as you follow around basically why they think this could be an impact site. Three volcanic intrusions cut across this basin in a line. Small pieces of heat-formed glass called spherules have been found in road cuttings, but spherules can be formed by volcanism as well as meteorite impact. Fell down 